गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू आज मेरे साथ मेरा स्टूडेंट है ही इज़ अ सी ए फाइनल ऑल इंडिया रैंक फाइव ऑल इंडिया रैंक फाइव आया एंड बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द इंटरव्यू आई हैव मेड अ लिस्ट ऑफ क्वेश्चंस जो मैं पूछता रहूँगा ये रिप्लाई करेंगे एंड माय फोकस इज मोर अबाउट वर्क एक्सपोजर एंड एक्सपीरियंस दैन जस्ट अकेडमिक्स बिकॉज अकेडमिक्स तो हम लोग दिन रात दिन रात एक ही बात करते रहते हैं इट बिकम्स वेरी मोनाटनस मेन है कि एज अ चार्ट अकाउंटेंट जो हमारा मेन स्ट्रेंथ होता है कंपेयर टू एनी अदर कोर्स इन इंडिया दैट इज वर्क एक्सपोजर बिफोर बिकमिंग सी ए वी हैव ट्रेमेंडस अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क एक्सपोजर हम लोग क्लाइंट के साथ काम करते हैं बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिलता है समझने को मिलता है एंड ये एक्सपोजर हर किसी को इक्वली नहीं मिलता इट ऑल डिपेंड्स ऑन वॉट टाइप ऑफ फॉर्म यू आर डूइंग योर प्रैक्टिकल ट्रेनिंग फ्रॉम सो उस पर भी मेरा बहुत एम्फोसिस रहेगा नॉ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आई हैव सम आई हैव समथिंग टू से अबाउट यश यश का ऑल इंडिया रैंक फाइव आया हिज मार्क्स आर ट्रिमेंडस इन ऑल सब्जेक्ट ऑलमोस्ट एवरी सब्जेक्ट इज गॉट एग्जामेशन आर्टिकलशिप uh, इनकी आर्टिकलशिप है डीबी देसाई से जिसका पूरा नाम भी है देसाई हरी भक्ति एंड कंपनी ऑल्सो नोन एज बेकर टिल्ली तो जहां तक हम सब जानते हैं इट्स अ वेरी बिग फर्म एंड विद अ मतलब एक्सक्रूशिएटिंग वर्क कल्चर मतलब इतना काम का प्रेशर वर्कलोड होता है और उसके अंदर भी और मतलब वन डिजिट रैंक लाना ऑल इंडिया वो एक्चुअली में अपने आप में एक सरप्राइजिंग एलिमेंट है तो ये इनका इंट्रोडक्शन था अब ये ही विल इंट्रोड्यूस हिमसेल्फ also hello everyone i would like to specially thanks siddharth sir for this opportunity and he has a big role to play if i am here right now it he has a definite big big role to play so special thanks to him uh i have few questions as i have prepared uh number 1 I want to know about your academic history. जैसे many people think कि जो इतना बड़ा rank होता है topper. See one digit में अगर आपका rank आ रहा है that means you are not just a ranker, you are a topper. So बहुत सारे students सोचते हैं कि final में अगर topper है तो पक्का inter में rank रहा होगा या बहुत ज़्यादा academic history strong रही होगी तो I want to know कि क्या inter में तुम्हारा rank था या नहीं और foundation 10, 12 के बारे में भी अगर थोड़ा बताओ तो बेटर रहे Uh, so i was always a good student a decent student not a ranker i did not get rank in either foundation or inter but yes i was always in the top 10s of my classes like i uh, almost i topped my class 12th and class 11th i came second in class 12th i guess so yes i was always a good student but not a ranker so uh, i got rank for the first time a professional in my professional career i got rank for the first time in finals and i to rank 5 so yes it is a new experience for me as well so that was my academic background one more thing that uh, in last 2 3 years because of corona almost all the classes have gone online so did you face that online class is a big hurdle in your preparation compared to offline classes uh not actually sir the difference between online and offline is uh, i i would say online is a bit more comfortable because we can do the classes any time it is actually quite difficult to manage classes with office but the difference between online and offline would be discipline we need discipline to do online classes and uh, if we are doing offline there is a push that friends bhi kar rahe hain to khud bhi ja ke kar le but in online it is a blessing you can take it as uh, you can find the advantage in it and do the classes as per your convenience at any time and uh, maybe even rewind if you did not get any subject so uh, uh, it is even better for my personal experience it was even better online classes were even better so to conclude i can say that uh, in your case given your practical training going on simultaneously you found online classes to be much more convenient than the offline classes right. but the only advantage with the offline classes is the discipline okay third uh, since you have done your practical training and as i said in the beginning of the interview my focus will be more about work exposure so you have done your training practical training articleship from a very big firm desai hari bhakti so what was the type of work that you were doing what was the work culture how many hours you were investing in practical training on a daily basis and along with that how did you manage your classes i was working in the field of corporate finance advisory service so i was not in the mainstream field of audit this was a rare field that i got the opportunity to work in so my job my work profile basically included mergers and acquisition due diligence so i had to analyze and do valuations which option is better merger demerger slump sale 
Moreover, I had uh, to work in succession planning and trust, private trust planning. Apart from that, there was uh, fund uh, fundraising services. That is the best mode of option to raise funds. So uh, we had to devote a lot of time in that, obviously. So our, our working hours were at least 10 to 11 hours effectively, at least minimum every day. So uh, classes, we, uh, we had to, we need, we, had, we faced problems in completing the classes, but my main aim was to do at least one class a day, if not more than that, and uh, compensate for the classes in the weekends. So the consistency was the key that I needed to do one class a day. So yes, we need to manage at least that. And of course, if the working hours are long, we also get to learn a lot of things. For example, in mergers and acquisition, there, were, there was a lot of practical application of section 230, 232, along with the related rules, fast track merger. So yes, when I uh, studied from the mat, it was quite natural for me. I could grasp it even better and uh, I saved a lot of time in those areas along with Siddharth's guidance. So yes, work experience is quite important and it also helps you academically because we can relate those experiences with the academic books. So they go along hand in hand and it is quite beneficial. Since you spoke about section 230 and 232, how were my classes, law classes beneficial to you? What specifically means in a specific way? Uh, uh, the way you teach the classes, it was quite enter entertaining yet informative at the same time. I still remember the very first class where your main focus was on presentation. You said that we have to start the answer like this and you always emphasized on solving questions and you actually devoted a lot of time with us solving the questions live. So, uh, I would uh, request everyone to please focus on presentation as well because presentation is very important how you present that uh, answer in the exam because that is what is going to fetch you marks. So along with Siddharth sir's guidance, if you follow him and uh, any teacher, you follow his guidance, that is more than enough. You solve the questions, you refer the mat, that is the approach that should be followed. Question solving is equally important. If we don't solve the questions, we can face problems in applying because in the exams nowadays, questions are completely new. We know, need to know how to apply the theory concepts and write the answer and what should be the flow of answer, what ICI expects from us, what should be the keywords. So that should also be a main focus. You have scored maximum in elective law, I think 85. So did my classes help you in elective also? and presentation wise also because elective is uh, case study based yeah. an open book yeah, sir. so i uh, scored the most in elective paper in my opinion it is a very scoring paper and we if we have basic uh, grasp of law how to read law how to interpret law it always helps to interpret the others other laws and if we talk about economic law in the main corporate law subject economic law is a field that is of course it is hard but at the same time, it is scoring because in exams, questions can come directly out of those economic laws that we have in the main corporate law paper. So it, if we uh, get how to interpret law, other laws can be quite easier comparatively. So it is necessary to gain the understanding of how to proceed first. And of course, it helps everywhere. Uh, one more thing. Do you have any pre-offers? We call them PPO replacement offers do you have any ppos and uh, how do you look uh, ahead in your career right now are you aiming for any specific sector to work in like maybe fmcg industry or finance sector so currently sir not right now but uh, i have an inclination towards the consulting field because uh, working in that field this is something which i have realized that i enjoy it so of course i would like and love to work in that field but uh, let's see, sir, what the future beholds for me. Any tips for students, specifically for November 2023 examination, given that there is a lot of pressure 
people are forced to shift to new syllabus from may 24 onwards this is particularly a burden for ca final students because if they don't clear then they will have to change the entire planning strategy and there are few changes in each and every subject also so what specific tips will you give to your uh, mother not friends likely but those students who are going to appear in november 23 and how do you see new syllabus compared to vis-a-vis -vis old syllabus the talking about the new syllabus change is the only constant we need to adapt to those changes this is something which is not in our control new syllabus or old syllabus and for november 23 students i would request you all to stay calm and have that confidence in yourself that you will be able to complete it in the very first go because the first attempt is the golden attempt you need to capitalize each and every day of your exam leave and be focused and confident enough that you will be able to crack it in the very first go and talking about syllabus this is something which is not in our control not in the students control so instead of focusing on that let's divert our focuses or focus on things that we can control what we can do right now is stay positive stay focused and stay determined and just focus on the thing on the goal that we have in front of us that is november 2023 20, exams so just be emotionally strong we need to be emotionally strong in these tough times i know each and every day of this exam leave is a tough time and i'm very stressful for each and every student out there but how you manage that stress and anxiety also plays a big role in your uh, academic performance how you perform technically so you have to be emotionally strong you have to find that internal motivation and just go on take rest but don't quit never quit now i'll be asking few cliche questions which every student who is preparing for exams is always worried about number one uh, since the last three to four months is study leave before exam so how many hours did you study each and every day during those last four months so uh, effectively i think i used to study for around eight hours if I was in front of the book for the entire day because we we can't afford to lose our focus and take long long breaks so I think we should focus on quality rather than quantity instead of sitting in front of the books for 14 hours and not being effective for even 6 hours it's better to sit in front of the book for 10 hours and be effective for 7-8 hours and trust me quality is what matters the number of revisions and all these all things you, you don't need to focus on that if you are studying maybe if you are uh, if you are able to do only two revisions or three revisions just focus on quality because i have seen people myself being an example that you can do well if you are also doing uh, it properly in two or three revisions so focus on quality that was the next question that i was going to ask the number of revisions every student has this three revision formula but you have already clarified on that that quality is more important than quantity uh, one more thing uh, many students are worried about that uh, how to manage those 16 days eight days of examination and eight days of uh, in between one day leave between exams uh, what was your uh, strategy to manage that did you get enough sleep or was it a complete sleepless 16 days so coming to the fifth, uh, 17 most difficult days of my life every day of your exam leave is focused for that 17 days it's how you crisp your preparation so that you can complete your course in that 17 days and trust me that th those days are very hard i actually it was not a matter of how much sleep I could get. I couldn't sleep at all. because I don't know why, but that is one thing that happened naturally to me. I was able to sleep. Sleep is very important. We should at least try to sleep for uh, at least six or seven hours before the exams. But personally, I was not able to sleep. My mom used to hold my hand and make me sleep every day. But uh, it's very important not to uh, lose your focus you might feel like uh, not your uh, that you're not giving your 100 percent in the exams but you always need to look forward for the next exam and please whenever you're feeling down just remember this that 
only four days are left five days are left only four papers are left you have come far so well you will do this too so just keep going one very different question uh, even my seniors and my teachers used to tell me that there is no need to attempt 100 marks paper it is better to write for like uh, 80 marks or 90 marks and write it well instead of targeting 100 marks uh, I have uh, not believed in that strategy. I always uh, try to attempt for 100 marks and even in my class I have always told students it is better to attempt 100 marks than 80 marks because you can train your mind to write full 100 marks also in the same time. Uh, what did you do? Did you attempt full 100 marks in each paper or like 10-20 marks were left out? So the first thing I would like to ask all of the students to stop is doing that ABC analysis that we do before the exams that this chapter has been asked before so this will not be asked so let us prepare for 80% so that is something that you should avoid at all my focus from the very first day was to complete and cover entire syllabus maybe 100% if it's possible so that was my focus because my I used to believe that whichever part I, I leave, maybe that is what is going to come in the exam. So please try to complete and uh, learn entire 100% and in the exams also my entire focus was on to complete the paper because my in my personal opinion attempting 100 marks is very important because it drastically improves and increases your chances to gain good marks. So Please try to attempt entire paper and it's, uh, it is difficult to complete the paper in 3 hours, I know, I have been there, but just try to attempt as much as possible yet at the same time maintaining the quality of those answers because both things go hand in hand and both are equally important. Uh, now I have a different question. Uh, first thing that law falls in group 1 and taxation DD IDD that falls in group 2. So did you do law first or tax first number 1 and if you have taken law classes first then whether my presentation and interpretation style how to read that uh, subject has helped you in tax also because I frequently tell in class uh, it's uh, very common. I always tell the students that the way I explain the law and interpret it will help you not just in law but also in taxation because the syntax the language is same although the flavor of taxation is totally different. I have been teaching for tax also since uh, last uh, few years so I can tell you that language may be same but the flavor is different although it's very helpful if you know how to interpret law you are comfortable with the legal language then you will find tax more interesting. So was that the case with you? So I first prepared for, I always went line by line as the paper progresses, paper 1, 2, 3, 4. So the first subject that I picked up was law and uh, coming to your second question, yes, law and tax, they are basically law, bare law. If you get how to interpret the first kind of law, it is definitely easier when you go to direct tax. For example, if we know how to interpret company law, it automatically becomes easier to interpret direct law because they have the same flavor, they have the same legal language and uh, basically we have a purpose behind the law. If we need to always try to understand what is the purpose behind the law and basically the laws they have the same flavor, just the concepts are different but the flavor is same. So definitely one kind of, uh, if we have grip on one kind of law, we can, we have a stronger chance to get that strong grip in the second kind of law as well. Uh, related to this interpretation, since you have worked in a very big firm, I think most of the consultancy work or even the auditing work, it requires several times to interpret law. And I think DSC is known more for consultancy than assurance. So in consultancy, you have to yourself look up several different laws which may or may not be in syllabus or may not be in the syllabus in the much greater detail as required like uh, merger and acquisition you are in merger acquisition so indirect tax uh, merger acquisitions has a matlab, uh, big input from direct tax also from corporate law also plus several other laws so was there anything like have you ever interpreted some other laws in the course of your consultancy work during article ship so uh, my work involved analysis of various kinds of laws, let me name some, Companies Act, obviously Income Tax Act, some portions of GST, even Registration and Stamping Act, 
SEBI has a big role to play when it comes to listed companies plus the competition act because mergers and acquisitions we need to take approval of the CCI so we are surrounded by law everywhere we have to interpret many types of laws plus we have the registration and stamping law which is a very difficult act because it is not streamlined in a very good manner so uh, practical experiences of law combined with uh, study they have a very good role to play in making your concept stronger so law is a very very important subject i guess and it is a subject which comes across your life in every field you work so we need to know how to interpret and proceed with the laws how do you see your career from right now means your article ship is going to get over in 15 days as you said so thereafter how do you see your career ahead so basically i actually enjoy the consulting sphere i i love to work in those fields which in, uh, involve application of mind and something which is new yet challenging at the t same time so i would love myself to see in big consulting fr firms uh, uh year uh, uh, going ahead so that is my main interest and aim but let's see what what the future beholds for me thank you so much i guess i've asked all the questions uh, it is really a pleasure to talk to you and i'm proud of each and every student uh the most striking thing about yash is that uh, since i am from the same city calcutta i know the rigorous pressure you face in the firm that he has worked it's a really big firm very big exposure a uh, tremendous work pressure and despite that getting a one digit rank from uh, that firm is a very very big thing obviously the exposure helps uh, it is really helpful and uh, people from dsc always get good opportunities even in placements so best of luck and uh, any last minute tips you would want to give to all the students just believe in yourself you can do it the the amount of work you put in th these four months are going to pave way for the rest of your life just stay focused and you can do it thank you so much